on the family. And one of the things that you are doing is you're teaching them, you know what, I love you, child, I love you, wife, but ultimately, I love God most. And that's something that we want to teach our kids. Isn't that something that Abraham taught Isaac? I mean, how much do you think Abraham loved Isaac? I mean, he waited his whole lifetime for this son of promise. God gave him the son miraculously, but despite all that, despite God saying, you know what, I know you love this son. I know your heart. He says, I know you love this boy. But, God's, but Abraham still was willing to offer up Isaac. Why is that? Because when it comes to the crossroads of who do I love the most, it's not a contest. It's always God. And that's something that we want to teach our kids. In our modern day society, you say, you know what? A good father is one who loves their kids more than anyone or anything. It's wrong. It's about loving God first and teaching them to have that same kind of love. You see, one of the things that I actually do with Paige every day is I tell her that I love her. And then she all, we go through this discourse, and it happens on pretty much every day. And she says, well, do you love God more than me? I said, yes, I do. Do you love mommy more than me? Yes, I do. Do you love me? Yes, I do. And that's one of the things that Paige and I always talk about is saying, you know what, there's two people I'm always going to love more than you, Paige. I'm always going to love God more than you. I'm always going to love my wife more than you. But after that, you have my heart. And that's one of the main things that I try to get across to my kids is saying, you know what, if, I, if it came down to it, God comes first. And we often think, how could Abraham be willing to offer up Isaac? Because we've all, all of us fathers have put ourselves in Abraham's shoes saying, could I do it? Would I do it? But you can, and you would, if you loved God more than your children. But imagine, for instance, being Isaac, laying on that, on that altar and thinking, you know what? He must truly love God if he's willing to give up me. You see, what... But we know that God spared Isaac. But can you imagine getting off that pile of wood and just and off that altar and realizing, wow, my dad's love for God is unquestioned. I mean, is that something that your, your kids can say about you? When they look at your life, not, I'm not just talking about coming to church service, but when they look at your life, your choices, your relationships, how you work, how you do life, how your attitude, your perception, your perspective on life, do they know without a shadow of a doubt, he loves God? Because that should be the first thing your kids think of when they think of you. Yeah, he provides for me. Yeah, he loves mom. Yes, he, he, he does a whole bunch of things and helps me with my homework and such. But ultimately, he loves God. If, you, if your kids can grow up saying that, then your character is showing through. And they would say, you know what? Out of all the priorities, God is first. Now, why does he work hard? Why does he love mom? Why does he spend time with the church? Why does he go to worship service? Why does he evangelize? Why does he encourage those weaker in the faith? It all goes back to that greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. You teach him that priority. And then you teach them a habit that you're trying to instill in them. The habit that I want you to love God more than me. And that's something that I try to tell Paige and so forth and say, you know what? I don't want it to be a contest. You love God more than me. You love God more than your future husband. You love God more than your kids. Because it shouldn't even be questioned. Isaac was left without a shadow of a doubt that, God, that Abraham loved God more than him. Mm -hmm. Because he raised the knife. And that's something that we can teach our kids. Another lesson that we can teach our kids is learning to obey God even when it's difficult. You know, obeying God is always going to come at a price. It's always going to come with consequences. And it's always going to come at something that's going to cost us a lot. We know as, G as followers of Jesus, doesn't Jesus tell us to count the cost? 
He says, really count the cost because you got to love me more than you love your mom, your dad, your brother, sister. You got to take up your cross and follow me. You got to deny yourself. You got to live without comfort because you know what? Foxes may have holes, birds may have nests, but guess what? The Son of Man has no place to lay his head. You really want that kind of life? You got to obey me. And you know, so many of you, I've heard your stories. A lot of you have sacrificed a lot for your faith. I've sacrificed a lot for my faith. I've lost a lot of good friends who won't talk with me anymore because I wouldn't approve of their lifestyles. You know, that, that, that's life. But when you teach your kids, you know, we obey God yeah. even when it's difficult. Did God command Abraham to sacrifice his son? Yes. yes. And that, that had to have been the hardest thing. I mean, wouldn't that tear, torn up your soul and just be like, out of all the things God could have asked me to do, he's asking me to give up my son? Why would he do that? But it's that realization that God is God. And we don't question him. We don't know his mind. As the Bible makes known, his, his thoughts are so much greater than our thoughts. They're so much higher. We don't understand everything. But can you imagine how much our faith has been built up because Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac? How much... Isaac's faith was built up because Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac. How much Abraham's faith was willing to grow because he was willing to offer up Isaac. You know, his sacrifice paid dividends throughout human history because he was willing to obey God even when it had high costs. You see, that's one of the things that you can teach your kids, especially when it comes to their morality and their ethics and their standards of perspective and living, is say, you know what? Sometimes we're not going to get ahead financially in the world. Sometimes we're going to get bypassed by that guy at work who's lying and cheating and stealing. Maybe this is going to happen, whatever it may be, but we do what's right. Even if it costs us everything, we obey God. That's a hard lesson to teach, but it's teaching your kids how to make the right choices. And the right choice is always obeying God, even if it comes with a high cost. That's something that Abraham taught his son Isaac. A third lesson that Abraham taught Isaac is learn to trust God in faith. You see, learn, I've, I've come to realize in my own spiritual walk that I learn to trust God in faith more and more when I start realizing his character and his nature and his deity more and more. I mean, the more you realize throughout human history and as you read the word of God, don't you realize more and more God keeps his promises? You read more and more. God is so holy that he is so perfect and moral. He's not going to lie. He's not going to cheat. He's not going to throw us aside. Or God is so merciful and gracious. He's going to take care of us. Or God is so generous. He's going to bless us. And all those different things. The more that we learn God's character, isn't it easier to trust him the more we come to know him? Kind of like when you build a relationship with somebody... When, when trust is being established and is built and they've given you reason to trust them, it's easier to trust them with things. This is why I, I believe Abraham was willing to offer up Isaac. And in fact, we know this. You know, the Jews knew why Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac. Christians knew why Abraham was willing to offer, offer up Isaac. And we get this answer from Hebrews 11, verse 17 through 19, which says, By faith Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. Do you want to know why Abraham was willing to offer up Isaac? Because he knew God's character. He knew God's character that when God made a promise, he keeps it. And he made a promise saying, through you, all nations are going to be blessed. And he made known, it's going to be through Isaac. And so if you kill Isaac, Abraham's logic is, well, God keeps his promises. He promised it would be done through Isaac. If I kill Isaac, he'll have to raise him from the dead. Do you see his logic? You see, a lot of times when we get put into these situations, we would try to legalistically reason and justify why we would not obey God or trust God and say, well, God... We can't do that. But did you know that when Abraham was trying to reason how God would fulfill his commandment, he did not denounce God's character. And in fact, he tried to come up with a reason 
that would actually uphold his holiness, his morality, and his covenant-keeping nature. 